Me too. And if you're in the need of inspiration, you're in the right place. Get ready for Smart. monkey business. It gets ugly at Arty Towers. And I put things into perspective. Hello, welcome to Smart. We're going to be walking around looking at things from all angles today. Yep, that's the best way to admire sculpture. Especially when it's an original by Henry Moore. We're very lucky to have it in the studio. It's called Reclining Figure Angles, and it's made of bronze. Now, this one is, in fact, stamped at zero. That means it's the original artist's copy. And it actually started life as this maquette here. This is Henry Moore's maquette. And if you look closely, you can see that it's gridded up, and that's how Henry would have known to get it from that scale to the finished scale there. And we're going to have a crack at making our own reclining sculptures using this air-drying modelling clay. Let me just get a crack in now with yeah, this. Yes, let's get moulding. Right, now, I think what I'm going to try and do is squidge it all up. Right. Yeah. To a nice... Ooh, I like the feel of it. ...round sausage. Hmm. We've got something to work towards, whether we can actually achieve that. <laughs> <laughs> At the early stages, they're not looking like much. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It's a start. Well, you sort of build it up and round, don't you? Yeah, then? you do. You know, Mark, when Henry Moore was working, yep. he was quite fussy about his meal times. He'd have them exactly the same oh, each really? day. And on each day, he'd have the same meal. So, like, Saturday would always be macaroni cheese day. Oh, really? It's good, that, isn't it? It's interesting, that particular little maquette, the way he's got the weight to lean onto that arm. It's quite... It's very difficult to do in drawing, let alone in sculpture. Yeah. The way you get the sort of the, the weight shift like that. It's uh, uh -oh. very tricky. Tricksy. I'm just getting my rough shape at this stage yeah. and then I'm going to make it all nice later. Tiny head. Yeah, I think so. It's sort of, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. This is all the, almost as the head's not really the important part of the actual sculpture. It's quite interesting. Right, the clay's nice and warm now. How you get? Oh, you're you're well, it's straight just sort of a big bottomed one. Oh, that's all right. So, mind you, the original's quite sort of got a chunky thigh. <laughs> oh, it's very satisfying, isn't it? Doing that's sculpting. That's great. Shall I need a bit of water on there? Slimy. <laughs> Might go for that clenched fist approach on there. You've just got to twist that body around. It's quite. That's what's quite difficult. What I'm going to do is just take a leaf out of Henry's book there and just use a tool to carve in some fingers. There we go. I think I'm sort of there, Mark. Very nice, Kirst. Right, I'm going to pop it onto a wooden plinth, like Henry Moore's one there. Let's have a look. Ooh. Arrange him. Mine's a bit sloppy, actually. <laughs> oh, come on, son. Wait. There he is, my very own reclining figure. <laughs> Fantastic, Kirst. Here we go. Here's mine. It's almost getting there, look. It's great, isn't it? Why don't you get some clay out, have a go? You never know, you could be the next Henry Moore.
we're enjoying another stroll through the gallery. Thanks again for all the brilliant work you've been sending us. Yep, and Sophie and Bethany have done this really clever 2D cityscape. Do you know what I really like about this? The way the first row of buildings cast a shadow onto the second row. And Naza Iqbal's picture caught my eye. It looks like a Lowry. A lovely piece of sculpting here from April Cowan from Cornwall. Look, she's done this very lovely horse out of sand. Alicia Hewins from Norton has done this very delicate landscape using wax crayons. I love the sunflowers. had a good idea for a 3D picture. He used polystyrene and then colour over it. Look at that fruit bowl. That's a really unusual technique, isn't it? Mark, I love Bethany Sanders' newspaper cat there. Oh, I like that. Sleeping away. This cheeky monkey from Catherine Spence. Actually, that reminds me of that blind date I sent you on. Oh, yes. Seems like only yesterday. Now, Kirsten sent me on a bit of a blind date. And I have to admit, I'm a little bit nervous. I've never been on a blind date before. She's told me to open this envelope as soon as I got here. So, uh, let's have a look. Right. Well, her name's Ellie. She's got long brown hair, beautiful eyes, luscious lips, and loves climbing. Oh, the sporty type. Right, well, uh, I better look my best. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> mm, oh dear. Now, what I'm thinking is, where can I find this LA? I'll tell you what, I'll ask. Excuse me, you don't happen to know where I can find an LA, do you? Yes, yeah, sure, she's in there. She's a bonobo. A bonobo? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kirsten. Oh, no, it's that silly Mark from Smart. I'll tell you what, Kirsten has got a point. I do love primates, all of them. In fact, I find them fascinating. I mean, look, take a look at little Ellie over here. Her facial expressions are so human. They even talk to each other, too. The trouble is, I don't speak bonobo. Oh, well, I better make the most of my date here with Ellie and get my sketch pad out. A date with me? I like me fellas with brown hair. What I'm going to do first is just draw two circles to get the basic head shape, OK? Put a cross in the centre of those circles for the eyes, and that will give you a nice guide for the ears as well. Now, Ellie, come on, give me a smile. Don't worry, we'll have a lovely day together. Hey, what would you like for lunch? Banana soup? Ooh, that sounds good. Oh, but look at his funny human face! Now what I'm going to do is concentrate on the body very quickly try and capture the posture. I've got to work very quickly because they don't sit still for too long. Excellent. Now, Ellie, I know you're going to miss me, but I'm just going to go for a walk. I'll be back later, all right? OK. Ah, oh, peace and quiet. See you later, hairy human. <laughs> oh, look, orangutans. Now, these are my favourite. They've got lovely long arms to help them swing around. They quite like being on their own. Now, I think I'll start with that big male over there, munching on that branch. Oi, you over there. You can't just throw a picture of me without even asking. Have you spoken to my agent? <laughs> start off with my two circles first. Now, these massive creatures are almost cartoon-like. Their exaggerated features are great to draw. Now I'm going to start adding some pastel so I can get that nice, long, matted hair. Start with the light colour first. The word orangutan means person of the forest. 
Sounds like they're having a party. Right, just to finish off with, let's give him a little bit of grass to sit on. <laughs> oh, he looks lovely. Right. Yeah. Do you have a look? Oh, it looks great, but don't you think my arms look too long? And my eyes, they're all skew whiff. Ah, oh, I think he loves it. Great. <laughs> Oh, excellent. Look, a gorilla. He's just like me. Broad shoulders, thick neck, strong arms. He's having a laugh. He looks nothing like me. I could crush him like a grape. I'm going to use charcoal to draw this chappy. Start off my two circles. And the cross, two eyes. You know what? I've never been this close to a gorilla before. And what I'm going to do now is to smudge all this lovely charcoal in. I want to give this shiny texture to his face. You know what? I'm feeling a bit peckish. Now, this geezer's really winded me up. Right, now I'm going to change from the charcoal to add a little bit of white pastel, because old Joe here has got a lot of white in him, because he's a silverback gorilla. There, finished. <laughs> See ya, but I wouldn't want to be ya. Hey, Ellie! Oh, no, he's coming back. Run! Have you missed me? Hey, listen, I've had a fantastic time here today. Should we do it again? No way! Oh, I'll take that as a no, then. Well, Ellie's not interested, but who knows? Maybe I'll have better luck with this one. Still, I've had a great day monkeying around. The street's very nice, isn't it? Very neat. Do you know what? I made this street. Come over here and I'll show you how. And the street you've just seen me in is this one here. I've made it and it's 3D and groovy. I'm going to show you how I made it right now. I have got a long piece of thick card here. This is 36 centimetres long and 13 centimetres down there. And then what I've got are, these kind of look like CD box shape. They're 13 centimetres square and I've got four of them. And what I'm going to do is, if I just bring my others in here, I'm going to start drawing my perspective on right now on this one here. So let's just draw a line here to the corner in a nice thick black pen because I'm going to do it quite graphically. And basically what I need to do then, these are going to be the roofs of my house, so you just need to then zigzag all the way along, go up, then down, and then back up again and down. You see the effect there, so this now needs decorating. Let's start, I think, with the red. And put the roof in. Almost got the whole way along there. Let's get the sky on now. So you need to do that on all four sections and once you've left it to dry you can just add a little bit of detail like I've done here. I've done some brickwork. I'm now going to start my perspective. So we know that it starts off big in the foreground and disappears to a vanishing point. So this first house here is going to be the largest. I'm going to start with the roof here and go across like that. Then the next roof, if I keep it level, will go across getting smaller and smaller as these houses go off into the distance. And let me just bring some of these lines down now on this first house. That would join up and go to the bottom. And then the next line, go there, getting smaller and smaller. I'm going to do some windows actually now. I'm going to get a slightly smaller, thinner pen here and do my lines across. In fact, so these first windows are going to be the biggest and as I progress down the street getting further and further away, you need to make them smaller and smaller as you go. 
when you've done all those windows and doors on all of your pieces, the last thing to do is just stick them together at right angles onto your back like that. And there it is, the perfect perspective street. Once you've mastered your 3D buildings, you need to put some flesh on the bones of your cartoon people. Start off with a stick man. Here we have one very simple stick man. I'm sure you know how to do these, which is good. So let's do another one. Two stick people. There we go. Little legs there. Now, to turn that stick man into a cartoon character, all you have to do is put some clothes on them. Very simply, this first one here, if you just give him a jumper, like this, and some bananas for hands. Turn these legs now into trousers. See, some little shoes. Let's just go around his head here. Suddenly, this little stick man is now all fleshed out. Very simple. There's your stick man. What about a stick lady? Well, all you have to do is change the hairstyle, like so. Let's just darken this a little bit. There's better. Oh, lovely. Give her a little T-shirt to wear. Bananas for hands. Little skirt. And some shoes. And there you have very instant cartoon characters. Now, if you're wondering why I'm wearing these 3D glasses, that's because I'm investigating an optical illusion. Yes, a 3D optical illusion. First of all, you need to make some of these glasses. Get yourself a piece of card and some red and blue sweet wrappers, and away you go. Now, I've drawn a picture here that I want to make into 3D. It's a brick flying through a window. Now, it's divided into three planes. The window is the first plane, the brick is the second plane, and the shards of glass are the third plane. Now, once you've got your image, you then have to trace over the entire image in blue. Now, the blue has to match the blue of your glasses. That's very important. I've already done that, as you can see here. Now, what I want to do, this is the fun bit, is go over it in red. And yet again, the red has to match the red of your glasses. Now, what you do is you line up your picture and you go over the middle plane, first of all, directly over the blue. It's very important that these two colours mixed together. Like that, you see. Very carefully, just go over the entire picture. Now, you go back to the first plane, which you have to shift the paper now to the left, just very slightly. Now, you'll see the image underneath, the very first one I did, just sticking through, and it's actually slightly shifted. So that's exactly what you want. The image has to shift on the first plane. Let's just get that in there, and a bit of that down there. I forgot the wash lines. Very important. Now you go to the third plane and shift it to the right. Now, go over that. All very technical, you see. That's, what That's it. Nice big chunk of glass there. Perfect. That's my picture finished. Now I'm just going to put on my glasses for the full effect. Whoa! Duck! Hey, <laughs> look at that! Nice one, Mark. That is 3D magic. Smashing.
sorry, it's only me. Ah! What's the matter? Take the mask off. Oh, very funny. <laughs> Actually, your ugly mug has just inspired me. What? So, what's this smart idea then? Gargoyles. Gargoyles? Yep, they're supposed to ward away evil, so I'm going to make one to scare you away. And scare me away? Anyway, two can play at that game. Hmm, I thought I'd probably use this egg box for starters. Ah, oh, what about if I go diagonally? This looks like eyes. Ooh! OK, I need to trim everything off now. Right, if Kirsten can make a gargoyle, so can I. I'm going to use tin foil though. Huh? Now to arrange everything. Those eyes. It's the nose. Ah, that makes a good mouth. Now I need to prepare this for painting. That's it. Perfect. Right, just a little paint to finish it off, I think. Nice textured effect. Whoa! He's finished. Rawr! Time to stick him up now. Lovely. Right, time to install it in the garden. Kirsten! Kirsten, no! Great, Kirsten. Actually, no. I've made a gargoyle for you. Come and have a look. Oh. What do you think, Kirst? Oh, yes. Very Hogwarts. Just wait there. What's he doing now? <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's great, oh, isn't it? Oh, wow. What are the plants as well? More than you do. Mark, this looks like a bit of a puzzle. Yes, a 3D puzzle, but we can solve it. Hmm. I reckon. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's it. That's it. Yep, perfect. Yes. Nice. How about doing the same with these? Just some bump. Got slots. Okay. Like uh, Alice in Wonderland, isn't it? Yes, lovely. How do I look? <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's put that in there. Yeah. Perfect.
beautiful pink flamingos, Mark. Very elegant. My favourite colour. Well, we've got to fly now. We'll see you again very soon. Bye. Bye. Hello, welcome to Smart. We're going to be doing lots of walking. You've stood on this shoe. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa, duck! <laughs> oh, goodness me, that's ace. Oh, ace. Am I in the 80s? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're with Inspector. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've actually blushed with the embarrassment of that.